Hey guys, Ashley here with my perfect 30 minute once a week practice session. Let's check it out. So before we get into the video, I'll quickly introduce myself. My name is Ashley Neves and I run the Tennis Mentor YouTube and Instagram accounts, providing tennis content for players, coaches and parents to get more out of the sport. I often get asked by players, how can I make the most out of my time on court? And quite often the players that I work with don't have the opportunity to get on court as much as they'd like. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick run through of a great 30 minute practice session that will allow you to practice all of your strokes and to make the most out of your short time on court. So before I get into the session itself, it's really important to understand that in any training session that you do, that you step on court with purpose, especially if you're limited with time. So before even getting onto court, try to plan out your sessions. It will really help your session to run much smoother and for you to get even more out of it. You'll notice that some of the drills that I've put together in this session are trackable or measurable which will give you the opportunity to track your progress and to set yourself goals for future sessions. This way you're gonna become a lot more accountable for your progress and you should see much better results. Now clearly, if you're only playing for 30 minutes once a week, it's not really gonna be enough to see a huge progression in your tennis. Playing multiple times in the week is gonna help you to progress much quicker. And if you can extend the time of your hitting session, even better. However, with our busy schedules, sometimes it's just not possible. So let's get into the session. I've broken it down into four sections. We've got a warm up, a drill, serve and return exercises and points. Within each of these sessions, of course, you can adapt the drills to suit your needs. If you've got specific areas that you need to develop, then you can change out some of the exercises to do drills that are more relevant to you. But the drills I've put together for this session are gonna be a foolproof way to get a good hit on court. So before your 30 minute session, it's vital that you're physically warm. So doing a quick five minute warm up before stepping on court will really help you to get more out of your actual hitting time when you step onto the court. The aim of this 30 minute session is to hit high volume and high quality as we've got such a short amount of time. We also want to make sure that we're covering all elements of the game so that we're not missing anything out. So once you've done your physical warm-up off court and you've stepped onto the court, for the first five minutes you and your partner should run through a basic match warm-up. Now a standard match warm-up for me would be a, about a minute of hitting in the service boxes then progressing back to the baseline hitting a few forehands and backhands just up and down the middle before progressing onto one of you hitting some volleys, a couple of overheads, and then your partner doing the same, and then finishing with a couple of serves and returns. Within that five minute warm up, you should be focusing on one very simple thing, and that's making sure that every single shot is as comfortable as you can make it. Now, when it comes to making your shots feel more comfortable, there are three elements that I find help me to hit the ball cleaner. Number one is to really focus on watching the ball. Now, I know that sounds obvious, but lots of players take that for granted. Lock into that tennis ball, so much so that you can read the writing on the ball as it's coming in towards you. As well as focusing on the ball, the second thing you need to be doing is making sure that you're really working hard with your footwork. So trying to make sure that after every single shot, you're getting back to a good ready position and you're nice and springy on your toes, ready to pounce on every shot. And finally, really focus on making contact with the ball in front of your body on every ball, whether that be on your forehand, your backhand, your volleys or your serves. Follow these principles and your five minute warm up will be high value and set you up ready to have a really good session. So once you've had your five minute warm up, already you should have a bit of a sweat on. If you've been moving your feet well, recovering and being nice and springy, you should feel like you've had a bit of a workout already. You'll also feel like you're seeing the ball well, which will set you up really good for these next drills that I'm gonna go through. Section two of the session will last 10 minutes long and it's the drill stage of the session. And in this drill stage, we're gonna go through two very simple exercises that will help you to benchmark your progress session after session. This drill is suitable for players from beginner all the way through to professional tennis player. It's called the two minute challenge. It's very simple. All you need to do is draw a line on your court halfway between the service line and the baseline. The short zone in the service boxes is worth zero points. The mid court zone between the service line and the line you've marked out is worth one point and the deep zone is worth two points. Anything that lands in the tram lines or long or in the net is worth zero. The player at this end is aiming to score as many points as they can within two minutes. The player at this end will be trading with them and keeping account of how many points they score over two minutes. Once your two minutes are up, you change ends so the other player has a go. 
This drill is great for improving your consistency, the depth of your shots, but also your rally tempo as well. A good score for recreational tennis players would be anything between 20 and 30 points. If you're a good club player, you should be scoring somewhere nearer to 40 or 50 points. And if you're an advanced player, aiming for around 60 and above would be excellent. Within our 30 minute session, we're designating 10 minutes to these drills because they can help you in all areas of developing your ground strokes. They'll help you to develop consistency, depth, speed, rally tempo, accuracy, positioning, and many more things. And to improve your score each time, you're gonna to have to adjust one of these things to up your game. I suggest doing one round on the cross court forehand with your partner. The two minute challenge, you'll do once each. So that will take about four minutes. Then you can switch onto the other side of the court to do cross court backhands. Again, one round each, making another four minutes. That leaves you two minutes to record your scores down. Now, you don't have to record your scores, but I definitely advise it. It will make for a much more productive session, and next time you come on court, you'll want to be beating your score. Now, within your 10 minutes, you don't have to stick to cross-court forehands and backhands like I suggested. If you want, you can work on your volleys with the same drill. Player one will be up at the net, hitting their volleys into the deep zones. Player two will be rallying the ball back and keeping count for you. There are many variations of this drill, but for you to track your progress, stick to one over a few sessions to see how you get on. But if there's any given shot that you want to work on, give it a go. So we've had the warm up. We've worked through our two minute challenges. Now we're halfway through the session. And for the next five minutes, we're gonna be spending some time on your serve and return. In my opinion, it's vital to practice your serve and return every single time you step on court. They are the most important shots in the game and shouldn't be neglected. However, I would suggest practicing your serve and return with a little bit of purpose as I'm gonna explain in this little five minute drill here. So we've already hit a few serves earlier on in our quick five minute match warm up. So your shoulders should be warm and ready to go. Within this next five minute chunk, player one will be serving, player two will be returning. The first minute of serving, player one will be hitting their second serves. So whether they normally do their second serve with slice or top spin, or maybe for a newer player, they might be just pushing the ball over and in. But use that minute to find your timing and to be consistent. Player two's job is to practice their more aggressive returns. Because player one will be rolling the serve in slightly slower, they'll have time to take on that return. So player two's job is to see if they can return the ball cross court or down the line with good length. You don't need to do any counting in this section, but really focus on those things. Player one is looking for consistency on their serve. Player two is looking to hit aggressive shots into the deep corners of the court. After the first minute, player one will start hitting some first serves. Now they'll start to get that ball toss slightly further in front. They'll start to flatten out their swing so that they're getting a little bit more power and hitting that ball lower over the net. During this minute, player's one priority is to try to increase the speed, but also look to move their opponent into an awkward position, whether that be serving out wide, down the tee, or even at the body. During this minute, player two is going to be working on neutralizing the return. So they're going to be looking for having shorter swings, still looking for good length, but taking some of the pace out of the ball to give themselves time to recover, ready for ball four. Once you've done this for a couple of minutes, change over so player two gets to hit some serves, player one gets to hit some returns. And if you feel like this is an area that you really want to spend a little bit more time on, then you can eat into the next section. As I mentioned, serve and return are so important. So when you're spending your time on your serves, make sure you have a bit of purpose whether it be consistency, accuracy, power, or whatever you need to work on. But as the returner, you also need that purpose. If you're receiving a slower ball and you've got time, be aggressive with that return. If you've got a faster ball coming in, then actually neutralize it with a shorter swing. So moving on to the final part of the session, and we're now looking at some form of match play or point play. Now, tennis is a game, it's a sport, so we need to be able to compete. There's no point in just training to train at the end of the day, we want to be able to compete at our level, whether that be singles or doubles, recreational matches or competitive matches. But by practicing points, you can put everything that you've been working on together. For these last 10 minutes, I would suggest using a tiebreak format to ensure that both players get a nice amount of time serving and returning and to allow you to change ends multiple times too. You don't need to put a score limit to it you could keep playing for 10 minutes until your time's up. Or if you play with the same player each time, it might be worth tracking your scores to see how you're getting on and how you and your partner are progressing. Point play is great because it tests all of the shots that you've been practicing under pressure. You'll be forced into more difficult positions and you'll be challenged with your problem solving skills. If there's something specific in your game that you want to work on, you can tailor the points around that. So rather than playing a traditional tie break, you may want to consider playing some conditioned points. And what I mean by that is you setting up certain scenarios to practice a given shot 
or a given tactic. An example of this might be that you want to develop your approaching the net skills. If that's the case, then your partner will feed the ball in short into the service boxes, you run in to approach and play the point out from the net. If you've really been struggling on your high backhand, get your partner to feed that high loopy ball into your backhand side to start out the point. Or if you've been really struggling with your serve under pressure, why not play a tie break and take your first serve out of the equation so you're only allowed to hit second serves. There are hundreds and thousands of ways that you can condition points to get more out of the session for your specific needs. So use your imagination and try to figure out a way of hitting more volume in that area. As long as there's a purpose, you're gonna get a lot out of that session. So there you go, that was a quick run through of a 30 minute session that I think will help you to get more out of your tennis. Like I said before, feel free to make adjustments to it. There are plenty of different ways you could run it but that was just an example of what I would do if I only had 30 minutes. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subscribing to The Tennis Mentor over on YouTube or follow me on Instagram and let me know how you get on with this session in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.